Outstanding, the ultimate accolade for teachers. We challenge primary teacher Salma Ali to go from good to outstanding. A top inspector observes one lesson. Two experts will fine tune her practice and improve her presentation. Salma then has three weeks to put all the advice into action before the inspector comes back for the final verdict. It's been really interesting for the children as well. They've noticed um, quite a big difference actually. <laughs> um, some of them have been asking, why are you smiling so much? <laughs> Seabright Primary is a two-form entry school in East London. Salma Ali has been teaching for two years. What I really love about teaching is the children, I suppose. Ultimately, the mood they create, the enthusiasm, the energy, the effort. The school rates her teaching as good. She's a very committed uh, and dedicated teacher. She'll be thinking all the time about her, what her strengths are, and what her areas for development are. Salma will focus the challenge of getting to outstanding on her year one class. This year I have to say I've got a very, very interesting mix of children, all from a range of different social backgrounds as well as a range of different abilities, where you've got some children who can barely hold a pencil to children who are writing three or four sentences. Bob, what have we been learning about in literacy? She's a great teacher. Te she teaches lots of stuff that I love. Mustafa. A man on the moon. Fantastic. Man on the moon. The challenges for me, I tend to have extended carpet sessions. They tend to run on for a long time because I talk a lot. This is a very small moon mug with a picture of a moon on it she would tend to speak too much in lessons. She may want to, to fill a gap if there's a gap there. So you're going to draw your picture on the middle and you can write a sentence about it. I love writing because it, it helps you learn and you get more confidence. What sort of teacher I am will ultimately affect the children's learning, will affect their development, will affect their progress. And I'm accountable to all those parents who hold me responsible for their children's learning, and I take that very seriously. And freeze. Good morning, Kata. It's the morning of Salma's first observation. With hundreds of inspections under her belt, school inspector Claire Gillies leads teams up and down the country. She certainly knows an outstanding lesson when she sees one. I've come to Seabright Primary School to see Salma Ali teaching literacy to her year one class. This morning, we're going to start with our game, Buried Treasure. Salma has 60 minutes to impress our inspector. Right, are we ready for our very first word? Can, 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 Kausa. Can you read what this word is? Shock. Shock. And what's this first sound in shock? So. Is it treasure chest or is it dustbin? Show me. Is it a real word? Not a real word. Um, Alexandra, how do you know shop is a real word? Because I've been to a shop before. Because you've been to a shop before, so you know shop is a real word. Fantastic. I learned what type of words are real and what type of words aren't real. And the words which are real go in the treasure chest, and the words which are not real go into the smelly dustbin. Who remembers what special book we have been reading about? Aaliyah, do you remember? Man on the Moon. So we've been reading this book called Man on the Moon. So today we are learning to respond to questions as Bob. Who knows what respond means? Who knows what respond means? Islam. It means that um, you listen. Yeah, it could mean that you, you listen to the question. What does respond mean? What does that mean, Sky? Res respond means like maybe if you say something, we're responding to you. you are answering the question. So you're going to answer questions and you're going to imagine you are Bob. How will you answer questions? So just thinking time now. Right, 
Chardonnay, how will you answer this question? What is your name? I'm asking you the question. You're going to respond back to me. My name is Paul. Very good. How am I going to start my sentence? Madiha. With a capital. Capital letter. So I'm going to start with a capital letter. My name is Bob. Capital B. And then at the end of my sentence, I'm going to pour many. Full stop. Full stop. Right, what, what good question could you all ask? How did you get to me? Right, there you go. That's your first question. Why don't you write that down? I've got one. What's your good question that you could ask? It's your job about cleaning the mind. Okay, so you can write that question. So you write your sentence. I work on the. What word do you need? Moon. Moon. What's your first word you're going to write? I like to the moon. But the question is, do you like working on the moon? Yes. yes. I like working okay. on the moon. Mr. Layman, would you like to come up? So, Mr. Layman, how did you get to the moon? I got to the moon with a rocket. So, Suleiman's answering questions. So, one person's going to ask a question, another person's going to answer, and then you're going to swap over, okay? What's your question? What is your name and your job? My name is Bob, and my job is going to space. Good girl. What do you do? Or give yourself a big pat on the back because that was very good working. And a big hug. And a big hug. And a round of applause. And round of applause. I, feel, I thought it was great. I loved it. Well, Salma, thank you very much. I really enjoyed that lesson. Thank you. Um, and it was obvious that the pupils were too. Mm. There were some really excellent features about that lesson. Yeah. Um, lovely, cheerful opening. The treasure chest starter mm -hmm. went really well, didn't mm -hmm. it? That was very effective. And you certainly stressed the key sounds you mm. wanted to check. And another definite strength was how you'd prepared work at mm. different sort of levels and styles of working to match clearly the different learning needs because we obviously had quite a range of mm. ability within the group. We had the sticky words which your learning support assistant was doing great stuff with that and really helping them to get mm. going. So there were lots of excellent features um, and why I'm saying it was a very good lesson but it wasn't quite the outstanding of was course, yeah. the order perhaps mm. of what you did mm. meant that the speaking that could have been developed mm. didn't really have a chance to get going mm. that well in the very end of the lesson in, yeah. probably perhaps because we'd sat on the carpet quite a yeah. long time and yeah. wasn't convinced they'd all understood what response mean or respond mm. Mm. quite a quite a complex word wasn't yeah. it they had great difficulty trying to define mm, it mm. um the sort of the bigger thing i suppose is that ordering to get mm. the best quality speaking as well as the writing, writing. Mm -hmm. i think that might have achieved even more wonderful learning mm -hmm. in that lesson but thank you very much i enjoyed well, it thank you for so your much. feedback it's been really helpful and really useful with the first observation over the inspector highlighted salma's need to create more speaking and listening opportunities and spend less time on the carpet it's time to bring on the experts. To boost Salma's progress, help comes from presentation and communications coach Mo Shapiro and primary literacy consultant Jane Scully. They start by watching Salma's lesson. Treasure chest or is it dustbin? I think she's got a great rapport with the class and she's really in touch with them. A couple of things that I'm going to work on. I notice she has lovely facial expressions but she doesn't smile very much. Who knows what respond means? And also I notice that sometimes she's very quick and she repeats things. Who knows what respond means? I think she had a lot of really good speaking and listening in there but I think it wasn't as um, specific as it could have been. Linked to that, I think her use of the teaching assistant could support the communication between her and the children quite a lot.
Hi Salma, I've just said I think you've got a lovely class. I, I can see you've worked very hard yes. to get them to be a lovely yeah. class, but uh, let's think about what we can do to, to move you from yeah. a very good teacher, I think, to, a, to an outstanding mm -hmm. teacher. Um, one thing that I wanted to think about was, was the learning objective of the lesson was to respond in role. Mm. And one way I thought that you might be able to really sort of have an impact on that side of things was your use of the teaching assistant. You know, using something like, can you just stand up for a minute? Uh, I don't know, even just something like, you know, just clipping Bob to you and you would be Bob and your teaching assistant would be asking you Chris. the questions for just a case of, you know, um, Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm okay, thank and, you. And um, what's your name? Uh, my name's Bob. Bob, can you tell me what do you do for a living? What's your job? I work on the moon. I'm the man on the moon. Sometimes the tourist comes to visit um, and I teach them all about the moon. And I also keep them entertained by doing somersaults and headstands. Oh, oh. Brilliant. Thank you, Salma. Um, if, if you had done something like that with your teaching assistant, can you see the impact that it would have had on the yeah. concept of responding? I loved your idea about using cut-up sentences. Mm. Another great way to do this with, with um, your, your teaching assistant is actually do something called the human sentence. What you do is you've got your my name is Bob and you give each child one of the words and then you actually get the children to move into the right position. Mm -hmm. So you've got my over here, Bob there is, and you've got your full stop. Mm -hmm. So the child with the my will actually physically move to the beginning of the sentence. Brilliant, right, we know that's a full stop. Where's that going to go? And the children actually communicate with each other. Mm -hmm. And they say, no, you move here, you move there. No, this is that's right. And then they stand back and they'll be able to see. I could see that you had really worked hard on your response partners, on your talk partners in class. So I'm, I'm thinking about ways that we can extend that for you and, and for, for the children as well. And I think the way to think about it is talk for learning can go on before, during and after a session. Um, one of the things that you could do is before they go back to their desks, you get them to stand up where they are, talk to, talk to the person next to you and tell the person next to you what it is I've asked you oh, to do today. True, yeah. Then they go back to their tables and even before they start to write, you, you say to them, okay, um, share with your partner what good ideas you've got, got today. Oh. During their writing, you just stop okay. in the middle mm. and say, right, one idea from a table and tell me, what, what good idea have you had? What, what, give me a good comment, a good response and go back mm. to the learning objective. And it's just a really great way for you to get you know to you more able extend um, extending yeah. them supporting the children who need supporting brilliant right get back on with it that's great and then afterwards you've got your plenary all of you look at one of your responses mm. and tell me how you could make it even better that's next time that's true yeah, yeah, yeah share it with the person next to you mm. you just had that concept of the talk before during and after learning then i think mm. your lesson will go from good to outstanding and you've got so many good features in there already, so many excellent features. You just need that little bit of tweaking. tweaking. Yeah. If we look at this checklist of your body language and your voice, and just see where you put yourself on the scale. So zero is not very good, and five, let's say, is up to outstanding. With eye contact, I'd put it on three. As your volume, I think I'm quite loud. <laughs> pausing, um, I think I tend to talk a lot, and I don't slow down enough, so maybe pausing isn't a very okay. good one for me. And that's one of the things I want to work with you on. Mm. Um, something about your speed, and also something about the way you maybe keep repeating things. Who knows what respond means? Who knows what respond means? What I thought I'd like to do is just give you an example of what that's like. I'm going to just ask you to catch this ball. Mm -hmm. Catch it, catch it, catch it, catch it, <laughs> catch it, catch it. OK. <laughs> OK, what's that feel like? <laughs> um, very fast pace, I couldn't keep up. You couldn't keep up, no. okay. So now I'm going to say, Selma, catch it. Selma, catch it. Yeah. Catch it. Catch it. That was much better. <laughs> I caught them all. Yeah. So you're not overwhelmed there? No, no. So what I'd like to encourage you to do is to be able to give the instructions once okay. and see who responds. Okay. If not everybody's responded, give it again. Mm -hmm. And then if still not everybody's responded, is there some other way you can word what it is you're asking them, because maybe they haven't totally understood. Right, class 11, can you show me the instructions you have written for Bob? Can you show me the instructions you have written for Bob? 
Can you pick up your pieces of paper so I can see the instructions you have written for Bob? Lovely. Good girl. Yes, I am looking for you to say, to understand what does respond mean. Peter. You have this, this wonderful rapport and communication with the children, but you don't smile very often. Oh, no. <laughs> it's definitely a surprise. So I'm going to ask you to imagine that I'm going to give you a wonderful gift. OK. But the first time I give it you, I think I want you to be a little bit suspicious mm. when you receive it. So let me give you the gift. Take it suspiciously and just have a little look, if you can. While you're looking at the gift, imagine looking in the, in the mirror and just looking at what that looks like. OK? Mm -hmm. And this time I want you to be absolutely deliriously, excitedly mm. happy. Salma, I have a gift for you. OK, now, now be deliriously happy. Yay! <laughs> See that? Yeah. OK. So now imagine mm -hmm. you've got the class. Yeah. They're in front of you there. Yeah. And one of the things that I noticed that you say, which is lovely, when, when you're getting them all to be quiet, you say, well done freezing. And I want, you to, I want you to think about doing two things. One is to say it with a smile. OK. And also, is there some gesture that we can bring in with it? I, I, I don't know, what, what do you think? Something like a... Yeah, that's a good one, actually. A good one? Because that's one. yours now. Yeah. Now, yeah. I want you to do that, mm -hmm. and I want you to remember that fantastically wonderful, brilliant present you got. Okay, yeah. Because they're giving you the gift mm. of doing what you asked them to do. That's actually a really nice way to think of it. Yeah? <laughs> yeah? They're giving you that gift. So smile right from the minute those hands come up. Okay, let's try that again. Five, four, three, two, one, and freeze. Well done for doing that immediately. Great. <laughs> With her final observation just weeks away, Salma's back to the classroom to put all the advice into action and raise her game. I really like the way you were sitting and waiting. Well done, Liam. Thank you very much. Right, today we're going to be learning how to label features of a Victorian home. Can you tell your partner, what did you draw in your Victorian drawing? A radiator and a piano. Like Jane was saying, it's not just about talk for writing, it's about talk for learning. So I've been structuring the, the talking a lot more. Miss Sobey, can you please tell me what might you have in your Victorian drawing room? I might have a fireplace. So, I want everybody stand up. Tell your partner what do you have to do today? Maybe all the things. The talking is developing more in the sense they're not just saying one word answers, they're talking in full sentences. Can you tell me your sentence, please? This is a window, this is a table. They all are getting used to the idea that whatever they talk about is related to the task itself. Remember, you can look at your human sentence if you get stuck. You can always look back and think, where did this go? Islam, would you like to tell us your full sentence? This is a writing desk. I was very conscious about keeping the talking consistent, so not forgetting that I could use it in the middle of the lesson. Why would you have a, a writing desk in your Victorian living room? It's because I don't have a computer. And then I did it also at the plenary, but I didn't do the same thing over again at the plenary. I got them to think about one thing that they have learnt. So the talk for learning went throughout. And freeze! Orange table, super duper. Um, I think another area is a smiling. <laughs> well done, blue table. I like the way you're all sitting and waiting for me. Automatically they're picking up on it and, and the other kids are picking up on it because they want that smile as well. <laughs> to get more advice on moving to outstanding, Salma reflects on last week's observation with deputy head teacher Ian Mullaney. If you see there, I think you could have waited a bit longer there. Yeah, because yeah, I think that, mm. that uh, one of the things that um, lots of teachers do mm, mm. is that they, um, they, they don't allow enough thinking time for the children. What do you think is sort of um, a, a good enough time to wait without ensuring that, ensuring that the pace of the lesson is going well? It's difficult um, mm. because it depends actually as well on, on, on year group. But mm. for, for these younger children, I would say between 20 and 30 seconds. seconds. Okay. And it will feel like a long time, mm. but it's actually not in terms of their thinking process. Mm. Mm. Right, this morning. I want you to get your thinking caps on because we're going to start thinking. What is this story called? Aaliyah, tell me, what is it called? 
the lesson drum. Who are the characters in the story? I'm going to give you some time to think about it. Okay, so thinking time is silent time. I did try the, the giving them more time to answer and what I've been doing is counting to ten in my head and I think I actually really enjoy just staying really silent because then it gives me a chance to observe them. Off you go, become the character. <laughs> Freeze! I am the voice I am the fierce living. Very good answer. Hi Jane, it's Alma. Hi. Salma talks through her lesson plan with literacy consultant Jane Scully before tomorrow's final observation. The sort of learning intention is to be able to write sentences um, about things that we could wish for. Good. I think my biggest fear is the timing. I'm just really worried and conscious of the timing. Like, um, and what I was thinking, I, I was kind of trying to weigh up between whether I should do a human sentence because that's kind of models the structure and it also will, probably will tie in with lots of things like capital letters at the beginning and full stop at the yeah. end, or whether I should write it. The good thing about the human sentence is it's very practical, it's mm. very yeah. But if you're thinking about the pace, perhaps this might not be the best lesson to use it in. It might just be best for you mm. modelling. Thank you so much for all your help and advice. It's been really valuable. Good to work with you, Salma. I wish you all the best for the future. I hope I will be outstanding for Claire. <laughs> I can only wish for the best. <laughs> it's the day of Salma's final observation. Claire Gillies is back and it's crunch time. I think I'm going to have a fantastic lesson today. All the With all that expert advice and weeks of practice behind her, can Salma make it from good to outstanding? This morning, we're going to start with our story map. And everybody stand up. We'll do a quick reminder. Once upon a time, we played his magnificent drum. Then he gave orders a big reward. A wish. Today we are learning to write sentences about things we could wish for. If you had a wish, what would you wish for? So, we're going to have some thinking time now. Thinking time starts now. Right, can you turn to your partner and tell your partner, what would you wish for? <laughs> a really good one from Alexandra. He wished for something interesting. I wish I had a pair of wings, a lion body to fly and, and eat meat all Who the would... time. So what would I start with? What would I start with when I'm doing my writing? I. Is that here? I. And remembering what I'm looking for, what sort of I would it be? Capital. Good boy. I. And then the next word is I would. Who remembers how we spell the word wood? Oh, you little darling. Good boy. I learned how to spell wood with the words that Miss said, oh, you little darling. Right. Everybody, stand up. Tell your partner what you need to do when you get to your table. I have to do a couple of letters. I'm going to stop. Boy, I would. What would come next? Wish. Yeah. Why do you want a tortoise? Why would you wish for a tortoise? Because he's clever. Because he's clever. Oh, that's a good reason. Yes. I like that. Would you like to get that now? So you can skip me your pencil. Where am I going to get you to stop? At the top. Very good. Kelsa, would you like to read your work to everybody? I 
would wish for laser eyes because it is mega eyes from council. Very good. Right, you can all carry on with your wishes and I'm going to come around for those of you who's finished and tell you what else you can do. Right, have you all finished? Yeah. Now, as a table, I want you to think about somebody you really, really like and a wish for them. I would like a, my, my friend Liam to have a new Five, four, three, two, one, and breathe. I want you to look at your work now, look at your work, and think, can I write sentences about things we could wish for? If you could do that, show me your double stars up. Very good. Right, and five. So has all Salma's hard work paid off? Well, Salma, really, um, I can t feed back to you what you said at the beginning of the lesson, because you said, I'm going to have a fantastic lesson, you're all so ready for learning. And I think you did have a fantastic lesson, which perhaps in Ofsted speak would be called outstanding, oh, wouldn't it? Because they did learn so much and there were so many um, lovely features all the way through that sort of cumulatively came up to a really outstanding lesson. Um, the, the repetition at the beginning was just such fun in the sense of, well, waking them up for a start and it showed they'd really got the story fixed in their minds. So that was a, a great starter. And we then moved on in a sense to um, lots of clear, excellent routines that I know don't come overnight. You've moulded them into a very responsive group who really want to learn. Uh, then you had a lovely fun way to remember the word wood, which they all quite clearly remembered. And my gosh, some of them can spell some really quite tricky words, can't they? And meanwhile, on the middle table, your learning support assistant was doing grand stuff with the three children she had. They certainly moved forward in that lesson. And when you looked around, practically all of them were beavering away. So that was a really successful lesson. So thank you very much indeed um, for letting me join it. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Well, thank you very much for all your valuable feedback. Guess what? I got ecstatic. I'm feeling ecstatic. I suppose because I was really hopeful for it, um, and then I wasn't sure if I was going to get it. I wasn't sure what way it was going to go. Um, and even the lesson, I thought, although there were some very good elements, I thought maybe I might not have got the outstanding. I don't know, I, I was just really unsure. Um, so when she said I got outstanding, it was quite a nice, nice surprise. <laughs>